Hey, welcome back to Token Tech. Today I'm going to install Raspbian Buster instead of Bullseye because reasons you'll see. Steam Link so that my PC can run games but display them over my network on my TV while also being able to use a controller with that. Automate Steam Link to start automatically upon boot up and then set up the Pi to boot up and shut down from a single button. Parts and tutorial links will be in the description. Let's get started. All right. First, go into Raspberry Pi's official downloads and download their Imager software. This has come a long way where now they just have an all-in-one package software where it will download the ISO and then also flash that to your removable media, in this case, the SD card for the Raspberry Pi. So go ahead and download it for your OS. Once installed, you're going to be met with a GUI like this where you choose the uh, Raspbian OS. Um, there's a lot of options here, like even... Um, some of the gaming centric stuff like uh, RetroPie, but um, we're gonna just no install normal Raspberry. And uh, in this case, we're not gonna go with the latest version. I found that I had to use uh, Buster because with um, Bullseye and these other builds of Bullseye, um, something about that new version, it doesn't support um, like some DirectX or something, but um, Steam Link wouldn't install on it and or run on it correctly. So I installed Debian Buster. I went with the desktop uh, setup because I'm lazy. I, the command line is uh, it's great and all, but I kind of like having the GUI for, for other reasons as well. So you'll select that. You'll choose your storage, which is your SD card that's in your PC, and then click right, and it just automatically does all the rest. So I didn't have footage of um, installing Steam Link. So thankfully to... Uh, raspberrytips.com and they do mention that raspberry pi 4 is uh, desirable but i'm doing this on a 3b and it's doing just fine so far um, you have your sudo app update and upgrade which is like best practice and then sudo app install steam link to get it going and it's going to install in a way to where you need to go back into your gui and go into uh, your menu and, and then games and then click on it there you'll find it there and it'll go through uh this process right here of configuration and validating um, your Steam Link to your PC and your controller and it validates your network connectivity speed. Uh, wired networking is definitely recommended on this. When that's all done, you're going to end up with the Steam Link icon on your desktop like this that you double click and you get presented an argument that you want to execute it and you execute and it starts the app. But we want to get rid of all those peripherals on the floor, right? So we're going to automate that so that it starts when the Raspberry Pi starts. So we're gonna go into this path here and just add um, Steam Link to auto start, which is a, a text file found in this path. Um, so at the bottom here, I'm just gonna add, uh, add uh, Steam Link and then Control X and Y out of Nano to uh, save it. And then, um, I found I ran into another problem. When my Pi would boot, it would try to automatically start uh, Steam Link, but there would be this um, archive update issue, and that's Steam Link trying to do an update, but the network wasn't set, uh, wasn't fully booted up yet. So you go into Raspberry Pi configuration, seen here, and click uh, network at boot, uh, wait for network. While you're in there, also go into performance and increase your uh, graphics memory to over 128. Uh, megs for better performance. Then I used this tutorial here to go another step further and install a momentary button with an LED indicator uh, to make it so the Pi will start up and shut down with the push of a single button. And that will really make it so you can get rid of all these peripherals. If your people have been using Raspberry Pis, saves you a lot of trouble with unplugging power and plugging it back in to start it back up again. So I went with this switch on eBay, they had a really funky schematic here. Like I know in the Navy, they replaced positive with negative. The whole philosophy of like uh, the with civilian world, uh, the charge is where it's coming from. They want to call that positive, but the Navy's like, well, that's a, that's a negative charge though. So we're going to call it negative. I Maybe they're on this track here, but I threw the schematic to the side, especially when I was probing the LED with my bench. And it was lighting up regardless of polarity, which is super weird. They got some kind of circuit in there to allow for that. So I just went with what I uh, pictured here, where I jumpered one of the ON 
uh, contacts, one of the switch contacts to ground, uh, or, or rather to the LED ground, and then uh, blue for LED and yellow for the other side, the high side that you see here in this. Um, I took a picture from that tutorial and translate it here. Um, so what you're ultimately doing is is using the momentary switch to momentarily ground that one GPIO to start the Pi and stop the Pi. And then the other lead is to turn the LED on or off and they share the ground. So to make the switch work, um, as the tutorial mentioned, the Pi is already set up to where if you jumper those two GPIOs, the Pi will start. But we want to make it to where when you do that yet again, the Pi will also shut down. So I went into the path you saw there, and it's also in the tutorial, and uh, put in this quick note shut down with uh, the same startup button, and then input from the tutorial uh, this string here. And then, uh, of course, uh, Control X and Y to save this file, and then move on to the cron job that we want to set up in cron tab to make the LED light up on and off uh, when you boot the Pi up. So here you can see uh, the at reboot and then this string right here that will make the LED work on that switch. So with all that done, um, you'll see right here that when I press the button, um, the Raspberry Pi will just start to boot up. And uh, this particular TV is great uh, when a HDMI signal starts going to it it just turns on automatically. So that makes this mod even better for me. And um, you'll see, eventually the screen starts to light up. Uh, Raspberry Pi OS um, it boots up. And then with that earlier string that we had saved before, uh, then we'll also have uh, Steam Link start up automatically without issue after that. So you'll see there, there's the Raspberry OS background, that Steam Link. Uh, icon, but boom, it just goes right into Steam Link without me having to touch the keyboard and mouse or anything like that. And uh, if I press the button again, it will shut down. Kind of scarily fast shuts down. I, I question if this is a graceful shutdown or something else weird, but um, that's going to wrap it up. I hope this was uh, helpful. Again, all the tutorials are in the links so you can uh, get a better view of the strings that, that and what paths they get saved in to get this all running. The eBay, eBay link is in there as well for the switch. But again, um, follow my wiring at your own risk because I kind of chucked their schematic to the side. And I did notice that like the LED stays lightly lit even with the Pi being off. But I'll attribute that to the Pi board itself being powered on because now you don't have to pull power out of it every time after shutting it down. And so uh, I'm gonna just attribute that to some GPIO leakage. And um, so far it's been working um, great. And again, I hope this was helpful. Have a good one, take care.